What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today is another fun one. We are going to go back through common mistakes that mountain riders make. So back by popular demand is don't be that guy 2.0. Let's get into it. So the number one, as we kind of start down this journey of, I don't know if it's pet peeves of mine or just things that maybe all of you guys can relate with and judging by the comments and just how well the first version of the don't be that guy video went, we're going to start it off with number one and that's being prepared physically for the riding season. If you think that by being at home, all of last spring, all through the summer, and all through fall, that you can just be kicking back on the couch, watching a bunch of sled videos with a bag of potato chips. If that's your regiment, I'm just telling you that you're gonna come out west, you're gonna ride at elevation, and you are gonna be smoked right out of the gate. So don't be that guy and get physically prepared for the season. Yeah, no, that's going to be super fun. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. What's up, dude? You're, you're ready? No, we're just going. <laughs> all right, so, so number two of all of these common mistakes we see mountain riders making and something that you do not want to be that guy is you're always, and this is going to hit home from so many of you riders, the last guy in the group to be ready. Oftentimes you got your whole posse, everybody is already ready, helmets on, already done a beacon check, and you got somebody that's just hanging back, his gear is scattered everywhere, he's typically the guy that nothing got charged, he's missing a glove, his goggles don't have the lenses in them yet, there's just all of those things. So number two of don't be that guy, common mistakes is last guy to be ready. <laughs> okay, so the, the number three, and obviously guys, he's just, he's just faking it, but the number three common mistakes mountain riders are making, and it's a don't be that guy move, is don't wait until you've done that to buy some simple knee and shin protection. Oftentimes clients, they come in the door, they think that the, the, the gear that they've got that's got the tiny little foam pads in there is gonna do that, and I am always stressing to people, to wear the right equipment for the sport. You fall off the sled, you hit the running board. Not only are you potentially damaging your gear, but you might be damaging your knee or your shin. So you've got two different variations here. You can go to the $650 full-blown knee and shin protection as well as a brace or the $30 knee and shin guard. But either way, don't be that guy, wear the right gear. Oh, the number four and you guys get it we got a lot of these things that are happening we haven't even gone into the backcountry just yet but loading or unloading your snowmobile with the scratchers down don't be that guy i get it you're excited for the beginning of the day i don't know why they were down in the back of your pickup or in your trailer but i have seen it happen and then at the tail end of the day it's like the last thing that you do as you're getting your sled back you made it home safe you're loading it into your trailer or onto your truck and you fail to put the scratchers up and you get to hear that sound of these things clanking their way up, probably doing some pretty severe damage to the inside of your truck or your trailer. Don't be that guy and put your scratchers up. Okay, number five of do not be that guy and believe it or not guys, I have seen a beacon checkpoint used improperly many, many times. You guys can tell that it was reading the big LED X 
as I get closer to the sign, it's giving me the circle, indicating that my transceiver is in fact turned on and in send mode. So as I travel into the backcountry, that's the position that we want it in there. I have seen people, and we do not get to be this guy, that are hanging out right here as people are driving by and just high-fiving their friends that it's working. It's obvious that it's picking up me and not picking up the rest of them, not implying that their beacons aren't on, but we're misusing the beacon checkpoint. So don't beat that guy. The other part of this is not distancing yourself from one sled to the next, where again, this thing is picking up that first person. If we're not allowing some time to go by and at least a sled distance apart from one another, it could be giving you all the green halo indicating that you're all working when in fact, it's basically just picking up that first guy. Don't be that guy. <laughs> Okay, number six, as we're going down our list of don't be that guy moves, side hilling above the trail. You guys, you get it. We pay to have our trail systems groomed. And as much as that was great snow, kind of a lot of fun, whatever, showcases I know at a side hill, you can see what it does to the snow for the rest of the people, especially around a corner like this. You get somebody that's not experienced, they come around the corner, and because I had to do a show off move, I've kind of put a bunch of that snow into the hillside or from the hillside into the trail. I have seen this move right here go really sideways to where somebody got up here, fell off, landed really hard and actually injured themselves on the trail. So don't be that guy and side hill above the trail within reason. And then also remember if I'm way up there and I've got people down on the trail, we're loading a slope above another person. Is this in fact Abbey terrain? We don't know, but again, don't be that guy and side hill above people. You guys will see an excellent example right along the base of the trail where I can get some side hilling done. Do that to your heart's content. Dude, that was a sick line, dude. Thanks. Woo! Oh, hot. Are, you, uh, are you sure you want to do that to your goggles? Why? You do know that you're just breathing hot air right into your goggles, getting your foam wet, and that is how those goggles are going to fail. Common mistake number seven, you guys. Goggle maintenance. And then while we're talking about maintenance, also having the right goggle lens for the day that you're having. You can tell that we're in flat light. He's in a smoked, a tinted lens. Obviously guys, on those sunny days, I don't like doing the squint either. So having a spare goggle and or just a second lens that allows you to go from a sunlight lens to a low light lens, it just makes a day go from an okay day into a great day because you had the right stuff. So don't be that guy, breathe into your goggles, set these anywhere where there's gonna get moisture inside the foam. You guys from a few years ago saw the goggle fog video that I think went really, really well and it resonated with a lot of people because maintaining your goggles is key to backcountry riding. So again, guys, we'll spend a little extra time talking about goggles and we all have that guy and, and potentially, you know what, I've been that guy where I've just, I, I came out and I didn't have the right lens for the day. A lot of times when it goes super flat light and you've got that sunlight lens, even a photochromatic lens at times can get awfully dark and you lose that perspective, which would be why we would go duck into the trees anyway, but on the way out or way to a riding area, if you're in some flat light open conditions, having that low light lens for that day can be crucial and actually end up being kind of a safety thing. So remember to just be prepared and take those two lenses out. Very simple. <laughs> Okay, number eight of don't be that guy. And you guys, we can, we can trace back to even just this last year, even the year before on videos when we talk about when to be neutral and then what is, what, when is it essential to be opposite foot forward. And this stems from watching so many clients that come through next level where they're, again, another video, concrete feet, not willing to make those adjustments 
You can tell I'm trying to make a neutral position turn. Nine times out of 10, can you give it gas and get away with it? And the answer is yeah, depending on the snow. Pretty low snow condition right there. I lean the sled over, I'm losing my balance. I'm trying to rescue it with giving more throttle when really all I need to do is jump from neutral position, opposite foot forward. I can slow it down, plant that foot out there and make a nice controlled downhill 180. All right guys, so number nine, oftentimes we're trying to make a trail, whether we've got somebody behind us with a, a sled that maybe needs some help and we're maybe towing it. Maybe we're riding with a group that is tired. Maybe you've got an injury. Maybe you've just got somebody that just, you just need to build a trail. So number nine of don't be that guy is the leader and, and sometimes even the front couple guys are really trying to establish a trail where there isn't one so that you can get riders of lesser experience and or like I said, all those other things, broken sled, something like that, up and out. The don't be that guy part of this is the guy behind or a couple people behind just acting like it's a free for all and destroying the trail that you're trying to build. So it'll look something like this. Wyatt, you got a copy? Wyatt, can you hear me, buddy? Where you at? We were just at the lunch spot. Where are you? I wheeled over. I'm stuck. Oh, crap. You guys, this is where he is. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Dude. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. My leg hurts. Guys, he's pinned under his sled. You guys grab your stuff, meet me over here. I'm gonna need help. Okay, so number 10 guys, you good? Yeah. You can go ahead and come out of there. We recreated something that's relatively serious. And the number 10 of don't be that guy is, you guys remember we kind of have to hold ourselves a bit accountable. So the meaning of it, of, of all of it, and we're getting a little serious here on this last one, but this is something that has been happening more and more frequently where People are trapped underneath their snowmobiles, things like that. So when you're in a large group, everybody stops in one spot to break for lunch. I'm just telling you guys, have, have the wherewithal, heck, have the conversation that if guys are gonna continue riding, ride within line of sight, keep that radio contact, and by all means, guys, don't be that guy that just takes off by himself. Maybe that this is, Another part of this is just riding by yourself anyway. It's just an obvious thing that we shouldn't do as backcountry riders. Even if it doesn't mean asphyxiation or trapped under a snowmobile, he's in a lot of pain and he's got 500 pounds on his legs and can't get off. If he's by himself, who knows how long that would be. So don't be that guy. Again, hope you guys liked the video. Leave those questions and comments below. We'll see you next time.